Oh, look, I forgot to put on my shirt today. Oh, just kidding. It's the color salmon, which blends in with me because I am 50% salmon. Welcome back. It's another day of Elden Ringing. It's late at night. The mists are heavy underneath the Great Erd Tree. Let's take a peek at where we are. We have finally, finally, finally ascended to the top of Mount Gelmir. And, um, I mean, the last few days were a treat. So, two days ago, we journeyed up this valley, reached the Shaded Castle, completed it, and I, I just thought it was a marvelous, marvelous little area. I actually really, really, really liked this area. Afterwards, we said to ourselves, hey, we're going to Mount Gelmir. And you'll recall that this entire area was shrouded in darkness. This entire area was shrouded in darkness. So we started here at the Altus Plateau, walked past the Erd Tree Gazing Hill, and wandered up into kind of a pretty large ruin, the Wyndham Ruins. Um, we fought one of the Turtle Boys, I don't remember what they're called, Tibia, Tibia Namibias, um, and began our way up through Seethwater River. Because you'll recall that many days ago, we said we're going to sprint towards the map for the Volcano Manor. We sprinted and we found out that the bridge was out. So we concluded that we needed to come back to the Seethwater River. And that we we're going to work our way all the way up here. We did the Seethwater Cave. We came all the way up underneath here to the Seethwater Terminus, one of my favorite words. There's a little fort here that I didn't go into because it was very misty when I arrived. So I said, do I want to go left or do I want to go right? Incidentally, we chose left and we wound up spiraling our way all the way up this way. Craftsman Shack, right? We have our little Hermit Shack, Craftsman Shack, kept spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. To the Hermit Village, this abductor virgin is way beneath the ground, but this Hermit Village is where we're going to in our yesterday playthrough. We fought another boss. There was a primeval sorcerer here. We crossed over here. We hid the Gelmir's hero's grave. We kept going. We kept going. Worked our way over to this campsite where, as it turns out, there's a ladder like right here. Who knew? Or maybe it's here. There, there's a ladder like right here. Could have found our way up there earlier, but whatever. Kept spiraling up, spiraling up, spiraling up, working our way up. Found another cave, the volcano cave, worked across this area, and got to this top crater here, where we fought a fully grown falling star beast, which clearly fell as a star, and is a beast, hence the name, we can see the crater of impact there. And now we are way high up here, gazing back towards the Erd tree, there's a forbidden lands off to the side. And the place where we're actually going to be beginning is at this road of iniquity, we landed here, we crossed over, landed, cleared this area. And this is what we're going to be doing. Did you finish Gelmir Hero Grave? Oh yeah, yeah, it, it was not bad. It was not bad, at least for our build, it was not bad. So one of the interesting things about where this is located, um, there is, if we actually just journey right to here, it's easier to see if I just waltz my way out this way. So you can see, all right, got to hand it to him. You can see that there is actually a cave right here leading to this, and the cave continues out to this entrance. So if I actually turn right around and wander back towards this uh, site of grace, you can see right there, see this little twiggy thing sticking up? That's the Erd Tree. That's this burned down Erd tree right here. So we're going to first clear out this area here, like this. Oops, I didn't mean to mark it with those. We're going to clear out this area first, and then go straight into Volcano Manor next. We've marked some spots here that I still haven't explored. We've also marked this entire area that was hidden under the map initially. You'll recall that if you defeat the Magma Worm and exit in the abandoned coffin or exit from the magma worm bonfire heading towards the abandoned coffin bonfire this entire area all these ruins 
this watery lake area, we have not explored any of this. We journeyed up the ruin strewn precipice and just took the path straight up the hill towards the capital. I can't believe how gigantic this map is. It's awesome. And we have quests abound. Now, uh, before I hop into this, I want to give a shout out to my friends that uh, I'm going to be doing this all week long. Let, let's mute this. Let's mute this. I have some friends that are working on a game called Spellcraft. They announced yesterday. No, wait, what day is it? Two days ago? From the developers that brought you games. Um, they asked if I would be interested in sort of like plugging this a little bit. And so I was like, dude, yeah, let's do it for the whole week. Um, normally, when I do a promotion, when I'm plugging something, I do something really straightforward, like what I did yesterday with Timberborn. You know, where I'm like, hey, I'm playing the game. I'm enjoying myself, which you can tell because I played for five hours straight without moving. Introducing. Oh, spell crap. Lightning striking through. Sign up for the alpha. Yeah, normally I am sharing the um, the game itself. It's on sale or something like that. You know, like pretty standard stuff. Uh, but for this, they're looking for testers for their game. And this is really common anytime something is leading up to release. Um, you know, there's uh, the words early access, alpha, beta, now just kind of mean a huge range of things, but they're they're looking to see if you hop in and play, do you enjoy yourself? And so therefore, part of what I'm doing is not sharing how the game works, not sharing specifics about it, not trying to clarify anything with regards to it, but rather their goal is testing and getting data about the game. So when you hop in and play it, let them know what you think. I mean, and uh, the reason why I am, boop, the reason why I was pleased to direct you to it is that um, first, they did something that I find relatively unusual, which is they um, often, you know, members of the public will be brought in when they're 99% done. When they're 99% done, They'll bring it in, do some finishing UI UX, maybe adjust their tutorial, you know, things like this. And then they'll basically release it as is. But these guys... I mean, I, I when I first played the game, it, it, had some good, it had some good stuff in there. But there was a lot that I found confusing overall with the flow of the gameplay. I kind of had a hard time tapping into the into the fun. You know, honestly, it kind of reminds me of when I first learned Go, you know, where it's just like, okay, I mean, it's pretty to look at, but I guess I'll need a study for 50 hours before I can, like, play the fun. And based upon the feedback I gave and a lot of other feedback, when I played again more recently, like, the later on that I played... Oh, it's a Wormy Boy, huh? The later on that I played, they kept changing it quite a lot. Quite a lot. And it actually wound up being way more fun in the recent ones. So that's that's the first thing that I liked quite a, bit, a lot about just the interaction. It's nice to see a developer actually sub substantively changing their game based upon what people are saying. This is another Wormy Boy, right? Should stagger on another one. Stepping is fine. Just one more. Roll, roll. Go. 
Marvel 2. Um, so that that's one of the things that I liked quite a lot, is that they, they, they changed the gameplay. Uh, substantially based upon the feedback. But, I mean, the second thing is that I, like, the most recent time when I played, I was like, alright, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, very, very simply, I played it and was like, yep, no, this is definitely a game I, I, I will play when it, when it releases. Um... And to come back to a question uh, from Tulian Joseph, are they looking for community QA then? No, 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 not not QA. It's not like they're looking for bugs. I mean, they'll have a QA team do that sort of thing. It's when I say they're looking for play testers. Old school. Oh, we're looking for testers. Is about finding bugs, and about finding like degenerate gameplay behaviors, or finding places you can get stuck and can't get out. Stuff like this. In the modern day, testing means. Are people enjoying this? Do we need to change this? How do we need to improve this core game? So I'm trying to think of... Um, what are some examples of... Well, I mean, you know, focus group stuff? Oh, I fucking hate focus group bullshit. Oh my god. If never in a million years will I ever put you into a focus group. I'm not gonna do that garbage. How dare you? Actually, that's probably. I mean, there's 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 good focus group stuff. A focus group is where you bring in like twelve people and you have someone just kind of ask questions and give reactions and it's a real whole structured hullabaloo, you know, this sort of thing. Uh, focus groups are kind of about gathering sentiment and information without a finalized product, you know. Or you'll have something really partial, and again, you're looking for reactions, you're looking for broad stuff. Testing would be something like, hey, let's put, um, let's put our MOBA in front of our players and see what happens. And it turns out, of your 200 items, only five are bought. And you go, fuck. You didn't ask anyone for any specific opinion. You didn't have this... Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, sick. It's not like you're asking little qualitative questions. You're, try you're trying to just, like, see what people are doing when they play the game. against this boss many times. This is the lowdown. See me just tank that? Did you see me just tank it? That's the one thing that I can't block that I need to roll every time. That's a grab. Leaden hard tier. Cerulean hidden tier. There we go. There we go. That was boss kill number one zero one. We were at a hundred right at the end of last stream. Big shout out to Velron. Boss one oh one. So I, I guess the falling star beast was boss number one hundred, huh? 
Some pretty good stuff. Oh, it was because you miscounted? That was boss number 100? What a perfect boss to end on. And that is one of the reasons why I enjoy some of the repetition of boss fights in this game. There's something I find very, very satisfying about seeing that boss and going, all right, I fought four of these. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Marionette soldier armor, hell yeah. Yeah, finishing off that, that playtesting point of view. Playtesting and alpha testing, it's, it's basically just having people play the game and seeing patterns and what people are doing. And, you know, if I, if I were releasing, um, you know, let's say I was releasing a card game that was like Magic the Gathering, right? I would be looking for data about what cards people are putting in their decks a lot, what cards are not being used, what are the archetypes... Do we have a data thing that can track what the archetype stuff is? Maybe there'll be some forum where people can post things, and they'll be like, I fucking hate this legendary hero. He's so unfun. The game sucks, you know? And, and then I would, like, have my data so I could take that feedback and I could compare it to that data, you know, stuff like this. Like, that's, that's really... You only get that sort of thing if you have enough people playing the game, which... You know, if you're, if you're a big company like a Blizzard, like an EA, you can just get thousand employees to just like play the game on a Friday and get a big old chunk of data. Really incredible. Oh, I also have a flask that I need to buff, yeah. Um, or if you're someone like who is trying to release something early access to get a little bit of funds and also have a community get seeded so you can kind of grow that community alongside testing your game. I think that's terrific. I think that's fan-fucking-tastic. It's nifty thwifty. Or, you know, like what uh, Spellcraft's doing, where they're just like, hey, we are trying to let as many people as are interested know that we are having some alpha testing. Please come play. I think, it's, I, think, I think these are all these are all many rivers which flow into the same ocean. Being able to verify that their game is interesting, because dude, okay, if someone sits down and plays your game, you know what the worst rating they can give you is? The worst one, seven. The shittiest number of all time. The oh, it's fucking terrible. That one's a six point five out of ten. Actually, that's the best, because there were too many good memes that came out of that. It's a seven. Seven is the worst. Seven is the worst fucking thing that you can ever get. On a scale of one to ten, I'd give it a seven. I'd give it a seven. Because you know what you're really trying to do when you're making any media? You're trying to create an emotional reaction. If there is a mechanic that everyone goes, yeah, no, it's six or seven, solid. Way worse than getting like, I hated this, one at this was horrible. That is way better than a fucking seven. A seven is a nothing reaction. A seven is a five. Well, let me, let me explain that. Most of the time, if people are like, nah, I didn't really have a reaction, their intuition is not to give it an average, eh, nothing reaction. Their wish is to, um, you know, oh, I just want to be nice. It was fine. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I'd give it a seven. Seven's fucking terrible. Fucking sucks. Do I have one of these? So, like, you know, if there's mechanics or cards or heroes that some people are giving tens and other people are giving ones, oh, that's those are home runs. Things that everyone is just like, yeah, no, I, I see what, what what you were going for. It's fucking terrible.
Digga, digga, digga. A Bujongo, I love this question. This is awesome. Says, Do you think devs should forego consistent user experience um, during alpha slash beta in favor of A-B testing for greater breadth of feedback? There is a lot to parse in that in that inquiry. There is a lot, 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 lot to dig into there. So here, here's how we'll go and approach it. So first of all, I think A-B testing and all this other sort of stuff, I... Who's ready for some controversy? Who's ready for some controversy, huh? Who's ready? Who's ready for a controversial day nine take? All right, here it comes. I think A-B testing in your game is fucking horrible. The fuck is the matter with people that do A-B testing? Oh, for fuck's sake. I even think in a lot of cases it's dog shit in Silicon Valley product development. I think it's the dumbest shit imaginable. Because here, here is a good version of A-B testing, right? Here is a good version. So Dow Sooner says, ahem, what is A-B testing? Sure. So, um, A-B testing, my understanding of A-B testing, came from um, when developers, when software was becoming, um, and, and large-scale software for consumers was becoming a big thing. You know, something like Amazon, you know, which is like this massive code base to be, for, to be able to have someone go to a website and buy stuff. So maybe if you are developing, let's just say it's a website where you buy stuff and then you get it shipped to you. If you're a developer for this, you're always trying to fix little issues, fix little problems, smooth things out for your user. And so what you might do is say, huh, how should we improve, say, this ratings page? How should we improve this ratings page? Because we want to make sure that people are able to provide the ratings of their products that will help other users, and we want people to be able to navigate these things cleanly. We have a lot of different goals. We have a lot of different goals. How do we get a sense of how to improve this? How do we improve the ratings page? Because again, it's not just like you do one rework of the ratings page. You're gonna be doing shit all the fucking time. I love the spider hands. You're gonna be doing this shit all the time. So what A-B testing is, oh. Cool. A-B testing is, is you might say to yourself, okay, well, let's see, uh, we, we have a couple ideas for how to maybe make people leave more reviews. So what would you do? You would make it so that anytime someone goes to the review page on your website, some of them load up version A, some of them load up version B. And then you see how the A group functions and you see how the B group functions. Ow. So, you know, th this is really great when you have some sweet, awesome, measurable things. Like, okay, we wanna make sure that people have an easier time checking out. How do we measure easy? We measure how long it takes for someone to hit the buy or like finalize order button. Let's do version A, let's do version B. Wow, version B is 10 seconds faster. So that's great, so that's really great. And um, A-B testing has been incredibly effective at doing things like eliminating, you know, this sort of subjective thing where people are just like, I actually think I would prefer this way. And you're like, well, the data shows that you are more often using this feature, engaging with it more quickly, are overall happier by these 10 metrics, so we're going to trust what the data says and this sort of thing. So here's here's why I fucking hate A-B testing in games. Or just A-B testing in general. Here's why I hate it, because doesn't it sound like everything I framed is, like, really great? Doesn't it sound like everything I framed is really great? Sure should. 
Sure does. I hate it because very often, if you are making a product, especially if you are making a creative product, like a movie, a book, a game, it's in the word, creative. You're creating something that doesn't exist. You are looking inward, trying to come up with a compelling vision of how something could be. There were not wildly successful fantasy TV shows on the order of Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones came out. But those showrunners had a vision for how to translate this book into a type of show that would resonate with an enormous amount of people. People are not going to be able to figure out and imagine your vision in the future and properly evaluate that. They're not going to be able to fucking do that. They're not going to be able to do that. And a lot of times I see this idea of A-B testing or just testing in general used as a form of abandoning responsibility. Well, don't worry, guys. We don't even have to try to come up with anything. We just make two versions of something, put it in front of users, and they'll tell us what they like more. Fucking I've fallen into this fucking trap, man. Okay, great. I know. I'll, I'll do two different things and share with people and get their reactions to it. Again, I, I hate the idea of a creator taking no responsibility for their creation. I don't mean responsibility as in the, oh, let's look at the effect of what you did. You need to take responsibility for what you did. I mean the, like, bro, all I'm, look, I'm going to write a book. I don't care what it's about. I'm just going to do some user testing. We're just going to figure out what they want. We're just going to write what they want. There it is. I I mean, I, I, I really despise that. I think that when it comes to, and again, I'll emphasize Brandon Sanderson. Um, if you are trying to put something in front of people to get information, to get a reaction, oh shit, he's gone mad. And again, I'll reference Brandon Sanderson on this front. He talks about that, like, if you're trying to get reactions from people, you should have a really specific really, really, really specific question. Healing. Nice little subtle references in this. The madness mechanic. Um, obviously related to the HP Lovecraftian idea of madness, where madness occurs when you are exposed to something you can't possibly understand, so you go mad, was implemented as a mechanic in Bloodborne. The more insight you have, the more susceptible you'd be to it. And so, of course, our little monster has tentacles. Ooh! Yeah, I mean, Brandon Sanderson talks about the idea of, like, you know, you might write a chapter and you might be saying to yourself, I like this chapter, but I'm really worried that these two characters are bantering, and I, I'm worried that the banter actually conveys that they don't like each other. I want it to convey that they have friendly banter. I thought this a mountain of fire, but I hardly feel a thing. We'll have to head further down. Well, I found that guy. Our great jar friend. DJ Woohoo says, Dan, I want to let you know how much I appreciate you and your content. You always seem to make me smile. Well, 
Thank you, DJ Woohoo. Your name makes me smile, and 23 months of support makes me smile. Oh my god, is the pop friend emote a global emote? That's incredible. Yeah, you know, like, you, you if that was your question, you might put it in front of readers and be like, okay, what was your take on these two people? You know, what, what did you think their relationship was? Oh, I thought they fucking hated each other. Okay, cool, right? You've written the entire section, you know the plotting, you know the characters, you know what's going on. You're specifically trying to track in your head, with this testing, are my readers going to think that these people hate each other? Or just they're having friendly banter. Like, I don't know. So, so that that's what you're doing, but I think it's it's very easy to like, you know, like I don't know if any of you have ever spoken to like really talented artists, and like next time you're 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 talking to an artist, ask them which animals they could make into a cool badass warrior, and just just listen to them. She'd be like, "Could you make a giraffe cool?" No, I can't really imagine, like, making a battle giraffe warrior. I don't know. Yeah, not, probably not. All right, what about an elephant? Oh, yeah, I could make a badass elephant. And just just start, like, listing things off. And, and I mean, some they might they might be one of those people that's, that's always like, yeah, I could do that. So then you'd be looking for that contrast between, like, oh, yeah, I could probably do that versus, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah, I could do that shit. All right, just look for that. And then ask yourself, how the heck would you do user data and user testing and this sort of thing? When you get big enough companies, they'll do things like, well, all right, so we made two different characters, and then we put it in front of 700 applicants and asked them to rate uh, how much they felt like they would relate to the character based on how they looked on a scale of 1 to 5. This got a 2.8, and this got a 3.2, so we know we're going to head in the direction of the 3.2. And I'm just like, oh, fuck, that is so creatively bone dry. We're in the manor. You know, it's the 700 is very optimistic. It's usually just like 70. I'm specifically referencing one where they did 7, 800. I mean, and it doesn't matter. The fact is that, like, yeah, let, let's let's call it 70 then, you know. Has anyone ever been like, oh my god, thank god we had 70 people check out our stuff. Oh, I can't actually attack in this area. Right, so where is this entrance on the map? Oh, it's diagonal. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So even though everything is in right angles in here... Or maybe we're currently underneath volcano... Volcano water. <laughs> maybe we're underneath volcano water right now. We're underneath lava right now. Because I can't attack. You can see the little orb in the corner. Oh, fuck! There's people! Yo! Are you precocious? We rarely receive visitors to the Volcano Manor without invitation. Fascinating. And not unlike another guest we had long ago. So, tarnished. Have you ever harbored doubts? About the burden of grace and the dogmatic ramblings of the fingers. Oh, heretics. Why not join the Volcano Manor and fight with us, rise with us against the Erd Tree? Sure. Your decision is most welcome. I say yes to everything, man. Now you belong to the Volcano Manor family. The drawing room lies down the hall. I am Tanith, the proprietress of this house. Ooh, little animation. An honor to have you. The drawing room is use the key I handed you. The drawing room is through the hall. Use the key. I this 
This is the most badass outfit. I love this. I want to. I want to. I want to look like this. We. I mean, like, if you if you just start testing with people and you don't have a sense, you don't have a sense of like what you're actually trying to make. All right, I'm going away from this. Explore around a little bit. So this is the hallway back. Great. Um, God, I had a point that I wanted to say before I got suddenly distracted by NPCs. Um, yeah, we're like, if you talk to artists who just like have an intuitive sense, like, you know, no, I, I could definitely make that cool. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like literally the, the story, the history of media. I mean, literally, we can just look at examples in the last 25 years. Is the data says you can't do it. And then someone comes along and goes, I think I can actually do it. Someone goes, well, the data says you can't. And then they just fucking do it. <laughs> like, comic book movies are never going to be a thing. They've always failed. And then, and then uh, now there's Marvel. And everyone's just like, God. Well, of course it was going to succeed. Blah, blah. The, da the data shows people like comic book movies. I mean... Yeah, no, it's... it's it's. So this, 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 is, why, this is why I hate um, a lot of conversation around, like, well, we need to be data-driven. Because I feel like people are looking at data in a weird way. I feel like I'm looking at the data, and they're looking at the data... And they're like, yes, this definitely can't work. And I'm like, wait, no, the data shows that it definitely can work. And they're like, no. I don't know. Where's block shot? Nice. What's this? Perfume bottle. And look, what what a perfect question from Bomb Bomb Briaker. It says, I'm designing a game to want your input. Would you prefer a game that made you face decisions that changed the game? Or decisions where saying that you'll join doesn't halt another quest, but lets you experience all the quests? I have a very, very strong answer for this. It doesn't fucking matter. There are billion dollar games in each category. Done. Make pick one and make it good. There you go. Ta-da! If I told you guys about Levi's problem, there's nothing in this drawing. And again, like, 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 my sort of answer is, is like, dude, you fucking figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, Sean, what do you prefer? Is there anything in here that I can get? What the fuck? How did it open? I can't even attack in here. What the fuck? All right, anyways. Like. You, you know what happened? I went up to this painting and I hit my triangle button to see if I could collect it similar to other paintings and it just opened. Oh. Wow, it's insane. Okay. Belly hit the wall. <laughs> Common problem I experience. But yeah, I mean, if you if you say, all right, bomb breaker. Let's get let's give a strong answer to this question. Should we have things that shape the story that cut off certain quests if you complete ones, or should we have a you can always go back and always complete all the quests? It's a completionist game. Which one should we do? And I gave the answer. Just fucking pick one. There's billion dollar games in each category. Go for it. There is. Um, here, here's one of my favorite little spiels. There is a creative problem that, or, or a category of creative problem that I call a Levi's problem. Okay? And it goes like this. Once upon a time, Levi's jeans had an ad that says, Our jeans are so tough, two donkeys couldn't tear them in half. Now, um, 
I don't even know if that's fucking true, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with it. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. I heard this story at one one point. They said our jeans are so tough, two donkeys couldn't tear them in half. Back when donkey-driven advertising was all the rage, and so someone put this to the test. They tied two donkeys to to the jeans, one on each leg, start having donkeys pull, and guess what happened? One of the donkeys died. As it turns out, those jeans were so tough the two donkeys couldn't tear it in half, okay? <laughs> One of the donkeys fucking died. Again, I don't even know if this story is true and I don't care because it makes a great point and you're gonna fucking remember it. Um, and I view a creative, a category of creative problem like this where sometimes people are sitting there pulling in two different directions. Maybe we're in a conference room and we have, you know, well, well, John thinks that we should make a, a, a game where the quest decisions shape and change how the player can experience the content. The other person says, no, 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 the player should always be able, Jill's over here saying, no, all the players should always be able to experience all the content. And they're just pulling in different directions. And the truth is, if you decided to go in John's direction, you could make a billion dollar game. If you chose to go in Jill's direction, you could make a billion dollar game. The problem is not figuring out what the right choice is. It's accepting that both of them could lead to great things and picking one. Otherwise, one of those donkeys is gonna die, okay? <laughs> AKA maybe you or one of your colleagues. And I feel like, I mean, you can see this happen in every industry all over the place. You have 10 people in a conference room debating, should we do this? No, I don't think so. I think we should do that. But really, I think we should do this. Well, okay, let's hear some more things. Let's get some more feedback from people. And someone is not just going, guys, any of these. Sean, please make a different hand motion. Oh, really? These donkeys, one of these donkeys is going to die. I think this is the perfect hand motion to convey what I'm going to say. You're not going to forget it anytime soon. That's for damn certain. Nothing in the drawing room? All right. And I think this is really important that sometimes when you're sitting there debating, it can feel like it's a hard debate when you're considering just all by yourself, just debating, just debating by yourself alone in a room. It can be really tough when you're considering these things all by yourself where it feels like it's really tough to come up with the right answer. You feel like it's really challenging to come up with a solution. How can I actually get the answer? It doesn't feel like there is an answer. Maybe I need to go get more information. Maybe I need to do this, maybe I'm doing that. And almost always, I shouldn't say almost always, but a high probability um, situation is just that you're in a Levi's problem spot. Just pick one and go with it. Oh my god, Deneb gifted five, and I actually think I completely whiffed on five that were given earlier. Ah, crap. Didn't someone just drop in and give five? Deneb, a warm thanks to you in the midst of our Levi's discussion. Recusant finger. Letter from Volcano Manor. Huh. Hello again. Brave Tarnish, do you remember me? I am Raya. Yeah, you were by the ruins, man. We spoke once in Lyurnia. I am pleased that we meet again. Here at the Volcano Manor, under Lady Tanith's guidance. May you tread the path of valor. She has our posture? Yeah, no, this is exactly what I look like from the side. Brave Tarnish, under Lady... Whoa. Who are you? And what in heaven's name are you doing here? Look at that the helmet. Volcano Manor is a pit of recusants who spit at grace and hunt our own kind. I hope you understand the weight of my words. Well, as long as you understand but know that the path you walk is blasphemy and leads only to a miserable death. Before you consider hunting any of your own kind, think on that. This blasphemy before you can. Cons <laughs> So yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I am just, I am the eternal believer in trying to figure out what are these little hitches that are preventing me from just sitting down and doing work. What's 
preventing me from going anywhere? What's preventing me from just choosing stuff and doing stuff? And uh, I heard this idea from uh, uh, an old designer at Blizzard. Hmm. Here to put the demigods to the sword. Then please kill the great serpent, the one that devoured Praetor Rikard. I left the serpent slaying spear in the Lord's chamber, worthy tarnished. Brandish the spear and run him through the great serpent. Oh yeah, I hope this is some serpent tech from Sekiro. Where, where did he leave it? Where did he leave this shit? Just hold the fire to my face. Remember, this is ghost fire. It actually frostbitten someone. Pray to that they were reduced to gluttonous depravity. Whatever that thing is, someone to spare him. Worthy tarnished. It is the Run Lord's it. Chamber. Where do we think the Lord's Chamber is? All right, I'm gonna just journey in through here. Hey guys. Hey guys, oh my God, James, what is up James? Let's go James. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's, uh, so yeah, no, I mean like, Coming all the way back to this data-driven approach, I think that, like, a really big problem that can come up is just not taking responsibility for wanting to make something. Oh. There's nothing wrong with just making something. And in fact, I advise, if you're trying to make something, you should make something. You see where I'm coming from? Do you catch my drift in this regard? If you want to make something, you should fucking make something, you know? And I think that it's so easy to be like, well, we wanted to do something, but we did, we took some data. We determined that really it just doesn't work. Oh, fuck yeah. It just doesn't work, can't be made. Depraved perfumer's karma. Yeah, you know, just can't work, can't do it. It's too bad. And I used this example yesterday, sort of like on a whim. Holmes oh, says, "What did that old Blizzard designer say?" The, the the designer's name is John Hodgson. He's fucking. He's fucking really. You're, you're, you speak to someone, and they're so smart, you start getting just like intimidated. They're not. They're not being mean, but they're just talking, and you're like, "Oh, fuck!" You're like very intelligent. And very composed as a speaker, man. John, 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 he's spooky smart, man. He's alarmingly and disarmingly smart. And in combination, is just an unbelievably thoughtful communicator, too. In other words, he's, he's very, he's very, he's a very skillful person, so therefore I think he's a fucking asshole. You know, fuck him. <laughs> and his multiple talents, you know. We always, we always turn into jealousy at some point here. I'm teasing. Um, but he, he talked about the idea that sometimes teams get in debates about doing idea X or idea Y when really both of them are fine ideas and you should choose one. Deneb! Deneb gifting us 10. Oh, yes. Thank you warmly, you little sweetie pie. Even him all, all joking aside, John John's incredible and has just communicated many, many, many great words of wisdom and advice. Can I swing you dingy now? Is this the Lord's Chamber? This looks like the banquet hall. Jesus Christ. Counter 
attacks were too fast. Oh shit, one of those things. Ease his wheel. Sick. Oh yeah. Spinning wheel? Great sword, too sick though. Too sick though. That ruins great sword. Is. But Deneb, how are you doing this fine Thursday? I actually don't really know what happened. This week has gone by stupidly fast. I've been sleeping a lot, which has been really nice. You can hold the weapon art and just keep spinning. Oh, that's sick. Is this really all there is to explore? Do I have to break this hole open in the wall to get anywhere? What was this key item I wanted to see? Uh, tail view. Just clean the Find a limb grave. Find the red mark on your map for his exact location. Did you read the letter left for you? That is the task. The Voki will be compensated once. If you are loath to hunt your own kin, so be it. But you must leave this house at once. This is a war against the. We have no place for the meek. War against the Erd Tree. Sick. Sick. Anyone else in here? Yeah, I wonder what happens if you don't find this door. There's a secret hole. Alright, so we need to... Do some taskies. Claws, fireproof red liver. Makes sense to get some fireproof liver here, man. We're so poisy. We're from Poisy, Idaho. You like my jokes? You like that shit? Where, where's Deneb? Deneb just like gifted five, gifted ten. Says, doing better with your stream today. Happy to see you. See you and your passion with love from Germany. Well, thank you, Deneb. Thank you warmly. I assume this is the start of the journey into the Volcano Manor. Oh, fuck yeah. Holy shit. Fuck yeah, dude. Prison Town Church. I see. Yeah, where is this? Oh, nice. He's over there. I'm going. I'm going there, man. Turn my little light on. We go here, and then here.
Yeah, I mean, I'll do some murders. I think this, you know, this was pretty fine. It's like a pretty fine thing to do. I'm like a pretty fine person. I think highly of myself. I think I do say and am good things. Have I, have I, wait, have I been to this side of grace? I don't think I ever saw this side of grace. I never found this? Are we kidding me? Oh, I've never been here. What the fuck is this guy? He's pretty strong. Oh, this is the guy from the Shaded Castle, huh? How the hell I would have found this guy, right? 2700. Bone Peddler's Barbarian. Oh, that's insane. Like, what are the odds? I guess I just... I never checked this area. Pretty sure I checked all out here. Alright, well... All right, well, 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 well. This lets us go east. I can't believe that. Wow, I mean, it's it's, it's like, uh... Whatever. Whatever, dude, whatever. Are there more of these at night? Crazy. Also, fan of various. I, I think City Graves comment is 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 okay. I think it is. We're constantly adjusting and retuning how we define these these kinds of things. Don't worry about a thing, City Fires. We're we, we're we are we always err on the side of being excessively banny. Wait, Did I just literally not get this? I don't think I've I've been to a lot of this area. Wow. Huh. Alright, well. I, I actually think that I just kind of spaced on this. I think this is back when I wasn't using that many markers. It's insane. Ethan says, that's what happens when you speedrun speed run through the game. I know, I know. I am known for my excessively non-diligent gameplay. Jeez. We've been invaded. Oh my god, the aim on this man. Hi. Hello. Oh, yeah, Desperado. You're so fucking sick. I love you. Alright. Alright, some thaw bones. There it is. I still have no idea what's how to open that. Invade Old Knight Istvan's world? Fuck yeah, man.
Good old one trick pony day nine. It's backstabbing. Alright. Sucks to be his problem. Alright, alright. That was a real person. No, no, I don't, I don't have PS Plus. Scaled helm, scaled armor, scaled gauntlet, scaled greaves. No, let's not. Please don't. Ah, fuck. What are you doing? What did you do to my chat? Get over here. Alright. Inventory. Ooh, I mean, that's actually a pretty good helmet. I mean, nothing compares to Lionel's fucking 10-pound beast helm, dude. With a mana. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. How close are we to medium roll? It's gonna be so good. We're gonna have medium roll soon enough. Uh yeah, you're right here. Hello, did I do it? You've completed I am pleased. Now you are a recusant true and a full fledged member of the volcano. Recusant being this someone who has abandoned world, as promised. The godship. Never forget. That the recusant fights to tread the path of the champion. The way is tainted, but for this very reason, yeah, I mean, it is the true path to valor. I like you have these old crones and literally the giant fingers. Now you are. I am pleased. The giant fingers that are like, you know, representative of this deity. My dude's gone. My guy is absent, man. He's so tarnished. He's out of here. You know, look, like you actually get this representation. Um, in game. So that way when they're like, we're abandoning the faith. There's actually like something personified that you can abandon. Letter from Volcano Manor. So, you've blooded your sword in the hunt. Then I shall introduce myself once more. Banal. A recusant, just like you. I want this armor. Recusants have particular battle arts, styled to our methods of slaughter. Why not add some to your repertoire? Oh. Eruption. Yeah, that seems kind of cool. I don't know if, if it's going to be better than our wave. I'll buy it. That seems cool. Well, have you any strange something beyond the walls, like breathing? Ah, I see. Slithering scales. Oh, far! It just isn't possible. Sometimes, like. Oh. All right, let's take a peek in my inventory. Riley, the idol. This is the best place to go to. Um, however, 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 however. With Jungle, I feel like there, I, I went on a giant rant about A-B testing and why I think it's so easy to just screw yourself over by doing doofusful A-B testing, but I, I don't even remember what the other half of your question was. It was an interesting one, so I'm returning to it. Any bosses killed today? I guess... Want to? Oh, come on. Yeah, that's right. The ulcerated tree spirit and the, the bell bearing hunter. Get 
Get off your fucking horse, dude. Get the fuck off the horse. Jesus. Riley, the idol. We defeated A-B testing. I know, we're so fucking sick. Ah. Dodged it? Holy crap. Rune arc. Got AC testing. That's where it's at. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Creepus <laughs> is vile. Ooh, talisman. Bolt. Illuminates all sound made by wearer during movement. Ooh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you what are we doing? Hi, sweetheart. Night at the Creepus. Alright, so let's Creepus eat us. Alright, let's go back to the manor. I don't know why I'm doing this stuff. Man, I'm doing this shit. Excuse me. Come on. <laughs> that was a that's a new meow. It's a new meow. That's a new meow. Hi. Hello. Hi. I see you before. Here is your usual. Serpent. Serpent bone blade. Hey, no, just stop chewing on this. Yeah, you can you can rest there. Just don't. What are you What are you doing? No, stop. Just God damn it. Fuck. Stop. You may not chew on that. What are you doing? Oh, God. We, we're having some cat issues. We're having some cat issues. Chance Buff says, currently on part 25 of the VODs, but signing up here to re-up my sub. This is the best content in years. I'm so pumped. Hell yeah. Are there any YouTube viewers who are joining us? No, stop. God damn it. Hey, jeez, what are you doing? Despy. Oh, my God. All right, look, we're taking a, a snuggle break. No, stop chewing on that. Ow, ow, ow. Fuck. Hold on. Get out of here. You're chewing on me. No. <laughs> Fucking stop. Get out of here. Despy, I'm sorry, but we're gonna gotta get out of here. Alright. Very bad. She sunk her teeth into me. Now, perhaps the time has come to tell you of the true ruler of this manor. Lord Rikard. Leprechaun says, yeah, mainly YouTube man here. Hell yeah. Tarnished with grace, but it was all too meager. In the face of the enormity of their task, the tarnished were forced to scavenge, squabbling for crumbs, like the shard bearers vying for power in the wake of the shattering. Our lord, indignant, has refused to scurry about, fighting over what miserly scraps they allow us. If the Erd Tree, and indeed the very gods, would debase us so, then we are willing to raise the banner of resistance, even if it means heresy. We at the Volcano Manor, is that Lord Rikard? Rikard, have sworn no rest until it is done. If you follow this heroic path, one day the Lord will see you. The Lord's visits with our champions are always a spectacle. It cannot come a day too soon. Cannot come a day too soon. A day too soon. Yeah, I mean. So again, I'm I'm understanding that there is this collection of uh, of religious godlike beings, the great fingers, and and the religion is not you know sort of a nebulous amorphous thing as it is in in this world. No, it's there's there's literally there's giant figures at the round table hole, and so. Sounds like there's a big conflict around the Erd Tree, the Elden Ring shattered, all these people are fighting for the power. And these people are like, dude, fuck all y'all. We are. Are you joking me? We're we're not. We're gonna burn down the Erd Tree. I think everyone's burning down the Erd Tree. A red letter. Look at you. I knew you take this. A special invitation. Huh. 
to hunt some of the first tarnished who sat at the round table hold. If you should accept, I'll next. All right. Actually, people are moving around. Are, are any of these other rooms populated by, by babies? Holy fucking shit! Are you serious? Brave tarnished. What is your business here? Why are you I'm afraid? This is not a guest room. What's that peculiar look upon your face? Goodness, am I still a serpent? Oh, how dreadful! How dreadful indeed! Oh, forgive my distress. I ought to be thanking you for treating me as usual. Despite this appearance, brave tarnished, this is my true form. My real name. No wonder she had a back is issue. Maybe we're all serpents. Please forgive. Do understand? Lady Tanith speaks no falsehoods, and the Volcano Manor is just as it seems. Lady Tanith, I am told I was born by the grace of a glorious king, that my mother cherishes this form I inhabit. I am proud of what I am, but people are cruel, and so but you are not. My serpentine for secrets. Now I share the secrets. Please keep them. Okay. All right. Who else is here, man? All right. No one in here. Uh, inventory. All right. Its final request letter is vivid red. Juno Hoslow, Knight of Blood. Alright, that's not going to be done for a little bit. Dr. Bernal. Oh, a written request from Volcano Manager Bernal. I'm doing everyone's work if for you him. Follow this, it cannot oh, wait, what? If you follow it cannot come and... Did you see her? The girl. Raya. With her true fate. Mm. Yeah. Well... If she confided in you the name Zarias, then perhaps it is not my place to speak. But as her adoptive mother, I ask of you, please. Be her true visage belies the purity of her heart. Honestly, I ha please her true visit. All right. Well, I'm gonna go kill some people. I I don't know. I kind of suspect that there's gonna be people coming in and out of this whole area. Does this open? Cannot open from this side. Is there like a path to this shit somewhere? Holy shit! Well, you joined the manor, huh? I don't believe it. I didn't think you found him. You. All good though. We're on the same side now. We'll do good work together. Oh, and of course, we can do business if you like. Hatches Emporium at the Volcano Manor, especially for you. Are you surprised that I belong to the Volcano Manor? I always hated the gibberish about Lost Grace and the laughable two fingers. I thought I could lend a hand in unmasking the shit. You just got you just gotta to mention, give it up for patches. It has always made me curious. I guess her master must really be something. But she's pretty damn smug about it. Even after announcing her blasphemous ambitions, she still stands proud. I've never seen a woman quite like her. I think I'm in love. Oh, uh, all right, what do we got here? What's this thing? Missionary's cookbook? Sure, let's get it. What are these things? Gold pickled fowl foot. Bar gets shackle? <laughs> finally, I have what I need to take on Margit the Fell Omen. Finally, finally. Here, why not? Cheers for that. Ah, this is for you. You're new here at the manor, but if you complete the request, you can improve your standing. Relax. We're old friends. Go on. Great. <laughs> Forgot something on your show? No, no. Dude. Alright, we, we've exhausted some dialogue. We got some stuff to do, man. Let's see here. This is... Alright, um... Great Horn Tragoth, Rune Strewn Precipice. Alright, so let me actually... I'm gonna go to my map, man. We have, like, so many things to do. Okay, so we got this guy. We have... One here. 
Is it both of them? Maybe it, maybe it, maybe it's a twofer. I bet you the way that this works is I journey all the way up through this ruin and then up here and then I cross over to here and begin the spindly path journey up through this. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um let's do let's do this one first. Did I not kill Patches in the cave? I hit him until he yielded. And I guess now that I'd look at it, that this is this should be inside the fort. Fortified manor, first floor. Yeah, I, I, I smacked him around a little bit, but you know he came to his senses and Patches is one of these guys where like all he does in all the Souls games is fuck with you. Did I really miss this? <laughs> okay. So they should be, like, literally right out in here. Oh, that's right, you gotta summon them. I don't know if I can take them out. I'm gonna do it. Let Hong Sol never forgive Dark Souls 1 patches. What a dick. Oh! Oh, look at this guy doing black flame. Dick. Holy shit. Holy shit. All right, I actually have to do... I actually am going to have to do what I don't want to do. I don't want to do this shit. This sucks. I'm going to need to equip my stuff. Did Bernal die? I mean, I, I believe that his spirit projection is dead. All right. Let's get the item that is always going to reliably beat bosses for us. Ooh, ooh. None of this stuff is PvP. This is all built into the game. None of this is PvP. I don't have PS Plus. I'm not going to pay for that shit. You kidding me? Are you joking me? Did I ever go back to Deep Root? Never did, Ramsey Red Wolf. We're going to do Volcano Manor today, though. That's going to be our... do PvP and just do this loadout. Oops. Raging Wolf Helm, Raging Wolf Armor, Raging Wolf Gauntlets, Raging Wolf Greaves. Oh, man, I'm such a rager right now. Dude, I mean, I've been getting some good shit from these. I love hunting Tarnished, man. Is this the place I go to?
Dan has a meta PvP build. Yeah, you mean pure chonk? Chonkosaurus to Donkosaurus? Okay. Maybe it's maybe it's on top. I don't know. Your fireplace poker seems super effective. It's a good poker. Is it up here? Okay. Okay, so here's the overlook. Uh. 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 All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna read some stuff. There's a, there's multiple levels here. Good, great, terrific, very, very good, very cool. I just jumped down. So it, it it looks like there is somewhere in this area where I can get some stuff. Fuck is this guy's? What? I mean, it is patches. So, I mean, him fucking with me seems par for the course. Maybe there's like a path here. Let's see here. Let me. Uh, just to be clear, I'm not asking a single person in chat to 
tell me where things are, saying hot, cold, things like that. We don't want any of that nonsense. I'm having fun on the exploration, you know. If you'd like to comment but feel like uh, you're unsure, she's the day ropey though. It's great. Web Corpus is day nine. You looking fine today? Uh, that's a spoiler. No one's supposed to know that. All right, this area seemed kind of arena-ish to me, but I don't see a marker. Back to the Magma Worm Cave and see if it's up here. How did Beaver Towns end up, dude? ASAP, Ferk. I gotta admit, I, I think Timberborn is pretty awesome. Very well. Okay. You know, I, I like my runes great, so I'm gonna use it again. Do, 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 do. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dude, it, it's like I found my long lost brother. Great horn, Trigoth, Runark. Battle of Womps. Blomp, blomp. Blomp, blomp. And you puzzle make me a real chonker. Bull goat helm. Bull goat, bull goat, bull goat. Oh my god, something. Oh, and look at the poise. Lionel's does have better damage resistance. Holy shit, that's heavy. Better physical damage resistance. Everything is a little weaker. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm partial to Lionel, so I'm not going to lie. It's literally even heavier. It has 10 more poise. Dude, it weighs so fucking much. Am I gonna look like an, a, a normal person again? What's my poise at? Uh, poise 133. And I now understand what this bull goat talisman was about. This gives 33 extra poise. Oh, yeah. But the thing is... I, I, I have come to identify as this. Like, this, this is my character. You know? And here's, here's, really, here's really what I'm thinking is I am astonishingly close. I am astonishingly close to being able to go Great Jar Arsenal, to be able to get this Dragon Shield, uh, not Dragon Shield, Quest Talisman, Erd Tree's favor. I mean, I'm literally one level away from having a medium roll with this build. So, you know, I think that's, that might be the way that it is. How many runes do we have? Yeah, let's just... So we should be close to being able to level up. Great. This is, this is, I mean, you're all gonna be jealous. 
Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, and... Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Look at this. I have a medium roll with this build. Look at this. Unbelievable. You are as shocked as I am. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, look, look at my equipment load. 111. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Oh my god. Yes! When he starts streaming Sonic the Hedgehog? I know, right? Sonic! He can really move. Sonic! He's got an attitude! Sonic! He's the fastest thing alive! Wait, uh, do I have any more things to do? <laughs> I got really into my Sonic the Hedgehog thing. Oh, this is the game. I think we may have... Alright, so I, I can remove these markers, because we fought um, our... Disgusting, revolting dung baby. And while we're... Uh, okay, we did this. So I have that other one. Alright, so I think I'm actually going to take a brief trip to the hole. Do we strike faster as now? I'm pretty sure it's... I'm pretty sure we're going to be... Striking at the same speed. <sighs> Explore around the round table hole. Um, show him Slovis's potion. Is that potion what I think it is, bloody Slovis? Oh, I won't interfere. The round table has no court. I ask you this: Are you really going to do the bidding of that twisted dolly botherer? Twisted oh. dolly bother. Would you rather hand that potion to me and see if we can't get one over on the bus? I'm handing the potion, man. Good. I'll you go and see Salavis, but Don't just tell him that you tricked your mark into drinking the potion. Despite knowing next to bloody nothing, he's so far up his own ass he won't suspect a thing. His inevitable display of arrogance will certainly be a sight to behold. Find the Albinoric woman. She hides in a cave to the west of the Laskia ruins, which just she knows the location of. There are four more demigods, yet Nicola of the Halig Tree, the Unalloyed, his twin, Melania, the undefeated swordswoman, Luna Princess Rani, daughter to Renala, and the one only known. As the Lord of Blood, Rani is said to have cast aside her great runes, so here at the hold. We seek the whereabouts of the rim. If you should learn, I'll trade your findings for a hidden treasure. We both desire to start as such. Alright, 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 Dude, I can't believe it. Here, Melania is a fight. I'm sure what's gonna happen is that I encounter Melania. And, uh, oh yeah, I always forget to do this stuff. I always forget about this stuff. So we can get Smith and Stones up to four. Sick. Dude, I can't believe I'm so nimble now. I'm so sick. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm just gonna like hold up a shield and poke her to death and it's gonna be like very anticlimactic. I'm sincerely hoping that's what happens. Sincerely. All right, so what do I need? Greeting, you oh yeah, yeah, that she does spirit tuning. That's right. Well, I took you, my man, to lay out your own. Yeah, yeah, arms then. What do I need to strengthen this? Somber smithing stone. We need smithing stone seven, and then I can get two plus twenty and increase my guard boost to eighty nine. Very thick, very sick. Oh yeah, I, I keep forgetting to do this. I don't care about leveling the torch. I am going to strengthen this. Oh, look at this. Dude. Dude.
How many do I need for this? Smithing stone seven, huh? So now I need smithing stone sixes. Great. Claw mark seal plus 18. We went from nothing to 18. With level one seal. Yeah, no, I always forget to upgrade these seals. I have a few other seals that I can't exactly use. It requires like so much faith, man. Golden order seal. Who's fundamentalist dragon cult god slayer bestial? How do I? Is there a way to learn which of my things are bestial? Because, for instance, these are broken into categories. Because there's these ones that just say bestial. Switch, mid view. Bestial vitality is just incredible. So let's see here. Um, uh, what, what do we do now? We're going to go back to the Volcano Manor probably. Anything by Gorong, I think. Yeah, but that's the thing, is that, like, I... I'm wondering if there's a way for me to not need to remember that information. Dude, I love having a quick roll. I mean, this is, this is fucking incredible. Alright. Hello again. Well... You hunted down Tragoth. Are you certain? No, it's quite alright. Fine work indeed. I'll give Tanith the new. Have some rest, but... Right, is there anyone else here? I, mean, I see this whole area is marked as, like, can't attack. Oh, down here is. Okay. He fought Rikard. It's only been alluded to, Bimic. Only been alluded to. If you follow this heroic, it cannot come... At all right. Disastrous is my three-day weekend is officially underway. I I'm actually thinking of taking a few days off streaming coming up here. Where's everybody? Ah, I have the reward. For Take it. Gelmir's fury. Fuck yeah. Let us tread the path of the river till we reach the miserable death that. A oh, really cool. You still are. You've come to us to take power. The recuse to raise the free recuse. All you can do. Well, All you can. We're recusing. We hate that we die. Hey, we're dead. Hello, I've decided to shrink back down with my weird posture. Um, forgive me. My mind never ceases to turn of late. Hmm. I know I can trust you. I saw something slithering in the pitch black of night. Ethan is skipping over important dialogue I can't abide. I'm reading it. I'm reading if it. I'm not mistaken. It took the form of a sir. Does the volcano manor that Lady Tanith has kept from me? I realize that I shouldn't impose. If you discover in it. Uh, yeah. Did you know that Lord Rykard, Praetor Rykard, has become a uh, snake man? Really? Oh, so there was a secret after all. Oh my. Lady Tanith. My own mother has deceived me. Yep, we all we all have that realization someday, huh? The grace of a king. What do you mean Santa isn't real? A betrayal? You would keep this from me, my own mother? I'm too young to know curse words. You're very... You heard nothing. You heard nothing at all. All right. Since I have come back, and we're going to journey outward. Lady Tanith, was I not torn by... Was I not bought What? Like, I thought it was King Grace. I uh, want to give a shout out to um, anyone who's interested in checking out anything that I enjoy. <laughs> There's a sign up for a game a friend's working on. It's called Spellcraft. I've played it. Uh, I really enjoyed the, the most recent build that I played. Really enjoyed the most recent build. Um, and... It's free to play. Not, I don't mean like the game is free to play. I, I mean that like literally it is free to sign up for this thing to participate. Um, Wigan says, do you know and we'll know if we've been selected for playtesting? I have no fucking clue, Wigan. None at all. Not not even in the slightest. 
they were like, hey, if there's any chance that, you know, your viewers might be interested in, you know, like, getting a chance to check out, you know, the game. And we've been just plugging the shit out of it. They made a request. I kicked him down a staircase. And I was like, Pfft. I'll tell you how I'll plug your stuff. Um, but yeah, no, they're, they're looking for people to play the game and, you know, give the usual playtest feedback, that sort of stuff. Shows gameplay, shows gameplay. I think, I, I think Shower Advocate, I'm not allowed to. I think I'm not allowed to. I'm under an NDA or perhaps an It Dependies. Um, but I mean, even more specifically, they, they, they are not interested in doing like, Hey, guys, go here, buy this thing. Day 9, please tell people to buy our shit. Uh, rather, it is, um, I'm supposed to tell you nothing about the game. Other than just generalized stuff. To get you enticed and excited to check the game out yourself. So, if I am recalling correctly, right here... Oh, wow. So, I think... I think that when we got taken by the abductors, yeah, we spawned right here. And we ran this way, and there's a tunnel way back there that we went into. Right here. Yeah, nice. Sick. Yeah, such a tease. Yeah, you know, it, it's... For them to actually get proper playtesting information, it's important that I not... What the fuck? Holy shit, this guy looks ridiculous! Hey. Get big. Enemy Slinky has been located. Yeah, it's important um, for them to have proper information. Because if I was like, it's a visual novel, and then you hopped in, and it, it's not a visual novel. Look at me. I'm able to roll away. Jesus, fucking dog. Holy shit. about how quickly this heals. So, I assume the scaling is to do with how long it lasts. Yuzaki definitely a cat person. Oh, speaking of which, I got a Junji Ito's Cat Diary. His comedy book written in the style of horror. Oh, shit. Fuck. Well, that's a fucking trap. So there's this area down here that we can go to. Oh, one of these things. Hey, we, we're built to take out these babies. Oh, I rolled. I rolled in time. Built to beat him.
built to win. Goodbye. Lejong, did you know they passed an option to remove 180 degree camera rotations on R3? It doesn't feel like they did. I don't know what that means. Don't know. So much easier with a little bit of planning. I think it's an option. Oh, I see. I can't believe I have a medium roll. It's fantastic. nimble. Holy shit, that guy was strong. Ugh. Ooh. Damn it. Ah. Fuck. Let me up there. I want to get up there. Oh, nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. Smithing stone six. Hell yes. What the fuck? So, all right, let's... I don't actually think I want to go down this path yet. And I actually think that my, oops, this is at 19, so I need to get to 20 and 21, and so I need, ah, I'm missing smithing stone 7, so got it. Let's actually go up this way, I'm curious to, gates are open. And actually, what is my, my cross Naganata at? Cross Naganata is at 21. So we can actually upgrade this to 22, huh? Because if we go look at our crafting materials, we need more smithing stones, eh? All right, no, never mind. Everything is perfect. Ah, shut Oh, look at the fucking sickest relink path of all time. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, shit. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. So I'm going to work my way all the way, probably down here and then to this rampart and then back over onto the roof. Nice. Excalibur Z says, damn, that's too bad. Seven is the worst smithing stone rating you can get. Well, it's good to have someone paying attention to me. I mean, God, everyone catch up. You're meant to pay attention to this stream? Yeah, no, this is... 
This is unfortunately not an ASMR stream, despite how relaxing it is to listen to me talk about shit. Oh! See you later, alligator. Lock a door, Roni. Nice. Pretty strong, I'm not gonna lie. Feels strong, my body feels like it's full of vitality. So how might we get up there? That just looks so pleasant. Okay. Speaking of huge swords, I continue my read through of Berserk. I'm almost done with first throne. Your throne? What a jerk. Finish my reading of Berserk, and it, I mean, it is. It is terrific. I mean, it is just great. Oh, here's how we get up there. Hit him. We're at an impasse. I'll go first. What the fuck? Did you know that those guys have a throw attack? Classic Mexican standoff. <laughs> mm. Oh, oh wait. Oh, I forgot. I have a bagel. I have a bagel. I got a bagel. Bagel. Dude. These bagels are so good. What kind of bagel? What kind of bagel? Ask them what? Well, talk about a little bagel. It's a tower of bagel. Let me try it again. It's a bagel. It's a salt and pepper bagel. I really love salt and pepper bagels. A great deal. A great deal. Dude, I've been reading through Berserk. It's... I mean, I'm only... Few chapters in. I've read maybe 500 pages. And it is. It is like right up my alley. I love that dark fantasy feel. I love that blend of horror and fantastical. So nice. Yeah, I had bagel and locks for breakfast, and then I got an extra salt and pepper bagel, and I forgot about it until now. Oh, dude. They do a really good job of, like, getting it nice and sort of, uh... It's not, like, crunchy, but the it have a nice, soft inside. Oh, it's so good. Jesus. Like, so hard. What the hell?
My god, this bagel is incredible. Do you toast your bagels? Um, no, I just, I just eat the bagel. I really just like a bagel. Wax Papers says, I do think the very beginning of Berserk feels a little weird in the context of the rest of the series. At the very start, it's all like, Guts is a badass. And the rest of the manga is not uh, as much like that. Yeah, I mean, I think that it was a good portrayal of him as, like, kind of unstable, to say the least. Some really good explorations about how he encounters various situations and thinks about various things. I'm enjoying my time greatly. Ah, we meet again. Well. Does it explain why his name is Guts? No, I mean... I actually... I, I've read manga, I've watched anime. I, I, I think that asking for an explanation is just not what the, the medium is about. Dealy up. Explanations are just like it's just not what you do in anime. Man. You don't explain things. Well, let me let me let me try it again. You don't. There are some things that you give no explanation for. The main character's name is Guts. Why Guts? Shut the fuck up. That's my experience of anime. I think it's a very reasonable way to uh, you know convey the world sometimes. I think I see how I want to go through this. Kill this abductor first. And then the, the, the remainder of the anime is actually explained to such an obnoxious excess that they're no longer telling the story. They're just kind of explaining. But, you know, one of my favorite manga is uh, Claymore. This is actually not the greatest, but I adore it. And the reason I like it a lot is that it's like a really nice blend of horror and fantasy. Medium. Roll. Oh. I mean, I love the idea of, like, forbidden power. And a power that makes you OP, but destroys you. I, I love that as a theme, just overall. I adore it. And Claymore is like that, just taken to an extreme. And Guts, I mean, feels very much so like the original incarnation of that. Necrozeris like says, Claremore was really good, but it's incomplete. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? It completed me. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the anime just ends right when they get to the north. Well, because I don't know. It feels like a lot of Claymore is just stitched together poorly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of just awkwardnesses happening all over the place. And like Rocky, I have never hated a character more than Rocky. Rocky fucking sucks, man. Rocky is this character in Claymore who is... Okay. 
Let me fucking tell you about Rocky. Jesus. Okay, so, like, I've, I've watched Claymore, the manga, uh, the anime, a couple times. It's great, okay? Story of Claymore is that there are these monsters that are shapeshifters. And, um, these monsters live among humans in a sort of lonely, desolate, dark fantasy sort of, uh, landscape with isolated towns all over the place. And so these monsters, Yoma, live in the towns, shapeshifting as humans, and picking humans off one by one, devouring them. No one can stop these Yoma except for Claymores, which are half Yoma, half human, um, beings who are hired to come to the town, hunt out the Yoma, and move on. Um, so, our protagonist is a powerful, enormous sword-wielding Claymore named Claire. Okay. So Claire, um, she winds up saving this guy named Rocky. Rocky lost the entire his entire family to Yoma. He's devastated. Oh, this blood is beautiful. Oh my god. Do you think these developers have played Bloodborne? So, I mean, the, the, um, Rocky is saved by Claire and decides, oh, can I break? And, and Rocky has no family and decides that he's just going to follow around Claire. Because she looks up to her now, right? Now, who is Rocky? How does Rocky behave? Rocky is the most annoying character in the entire universe. Rocky is not like, I have no one, Claire. I'm nothing, I, I'm going to follow you. Whatever you need, I'll forever be your right hand. You know, Rocky literally is like, oh God, Claire, I have nothing, I'm weak. I'm so weak and I need someone strong like you to protect me, you're the only person who's ever cared for me enough. Oh fuck, Claire, oh my God. Like, literally every time I rewatch this anime, I'm like, yeah, we'll get past the Rocky parts. There's a lot of cool things, you know, we'll work past this obnoxious characters. We can get to the cool stuff. And every time it comes up, I'm like, fuck, I really should put, should turn this shit off. Oh, my God. I mean, it's horrible. Worse than Jar Jar Binks. Oh, a thousand times worse. Jar Jar Binks is there for 90 minutes. This guy's in, like, fucking, like, 18 episodes, man. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Claire, help me out. Oh, fuck. Rocky, don't. Oh, Claire, please. I'm so weak. Yeah, no. Mesmerize says, I still don't understand why Rocky was necessary to the story. Right? I mean, like, not only is this character fucking unnecessary as fuck. But, I mean, he is, like, prominently featured in the story. I mean, it, it is, like, imagine if Jar Jar Binks was the main character, and they just followed him around. You'd be like, what, what the fuck were they doing? Oh, it's a dog. Hit the fucking dog. He has his own chapters, too. I know, right? And he just falls around. Oh, God! Oh, fuck! The absolute worst, the bottom ranker, for sure. Some interesting little designs here. I'm gonna go grab this one, I think. Good now. Oh, this is Rocky's here to distract Claire. Making errors. Putting her in tough situations. It's plot contrivance to make sure so Claire doesn't steamroll everything like she would. Makes sense. That makes sense. Fucking love Claymore. Love Claymore because the, the monster design is astonishing. The monster design is so good, dude. So good. Alright, so we go up like here, and then we go here. Woo! Oh shit, I just fucking died. Jesus. What a waste. What a waste.
Time to go through this place again. Time to go through it. <laughs> runes perma loss. If I really lost half a million runes, it's not bad. If I can get this first one, it's pretty straightforward. I'm really sad I'm out of bagel now. I'm really sad. I mean, that was a good bagel. That was a good bagel. It was as interesting how runes lost on death. It's a lot like the old experience lost on death in games, but it doesn't feel as bad as, say, 10% XP lost in every death. Yeah, I think that, like, old games like Lineage 2, you know, you die, you lose like 10% of a level or whatever it is. The Erd Tree Seal. Is that like a key item? I bet you it's a fucking seal. Figured it out. You didn't figure it out. You don't even know. <laughs> even though the Elden Ring is shattered and the Erd Tree is dulled from its former radiance, earnest faith continues to hold the answers. Yeah, I guess when your your entire religion is centered around the Elden Ring and the tree and shit. Oh, oh, fuck! Alright. Yeah, if all of a sudden the tree starts wilting, the seal starts shattering, you know, then you're just, you know, you're gonna be a little disenchanted with your little tree, you know? So I'm going to reversey bursey my way through this. Common technique. So there should be a dog somewhere around here. Still got to get that thing. Yeah, I commented on the Colossal Greatsword buffs. Dude, Yuri ITV. You feel it. It feels really nice. Me, dude. God. Damn. Give me a fucking break. I accidentally hit the right trigger. God, it's 
just not... I don't swing quite fast enough. But I'm getting owned by this guy. Oh, thank God. Oh. Build for this map. All right. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Need to get my Naginata out. This thing still doesn't swing fast enough. Oh yeah, I remember you. I will now safely take this path. That's right. Ooh, that was close. See, we're learning. When slinkies go bad. Oh, fuck, that's really bad for me. No, I, I actually don't even think I need to go back through here again. No way, I do. I do, I do, I do. Because there's a place up here that we need to go to. So that, there, there it is. Oh my god. The most incredible journey. Smithing Stone 5. Alright. Hell yeah. We are doing it. Oh, you little... Look at my nimble roll. Alright, so... Okay. All right. In it goes. Hi. Two naps. Ah! Oh, this is why we switched. Stab. 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 You're kind of like naganata ing I said that out loud and I disagreed with it the moment it left my lips. Dude, I love this frickin' sword so frickin' much. Crimson Amber Medallion plus one. Healthy wealthy. Chiral Alchemist says, does anyone wish the enemy's weapons respected walls like the players? I feel like they do, don't they? How do I get under here? Oh, 
Oh, so am I actually going to go, like, all the way around here and reconnect, like, over there? Oh. Reminds me of, uh... God, what, what, what's the... What's the town name in Bloodborne? The Unseen Yargul. Yeah. Most of the areas in Bloodborne have a... Uh, or Yahargul. Yeah, most of the areas in Bloodborne have, like... Uh, one. The Bonfire, Side of Grace. Lanterns, whatever they're called. They have the one. Remember, Yahargul broke that with the two. Cannot hope. <laughs> Revenue Johnson's man, that place's lore is fucked up. Yeah, dude, the nightmare of Mensis is just gruesome. Smithing Stone 4, give me a fucking break. Man Serpent's Shield. And where do we go now? I keep forgetting that I own Bloodborne as a disc. Like, what even is that? What's a disc? Yeah, what is a disc, Desper? Oh, hey. Look at that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, hey. Wait a minute. Wait a gosh darn, gosh danged minute. Owning games? What is this? Yeah, no, I, I, I want my entire life on the cloud. I like collectibles, but boy do I like having to not manage shit. Who? Oh, these. Ugh. Einzi, this is my ex-girlfriend, has my Bloodborne copy. Oh, we've all been there, where you're just like, do I really want to try to repair this relationship to get this disc back? I mean, $50 is not that much, right? Oops. So I go this way. Look at this little. Oh, shit. Alright, we can solve that problem. Yeah, I forgot about this little path. I didn't actually check this. Nice. Alright. <laughs> Alright. A blessing in disguise. Oh, fuck yeah, that's fucking sweet. Oh, what the fuck?
you explode? No. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Is this my guy? Is this my guy? No, this is not my guy. Alright, I respect you. Smoldering shield, sick. I mean, nice. Ooh, that raw meat dumpling. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Time to climb inside? No. No, 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 okay, no. Oh, dude. I betcha. I can make this? No. I actually am certain I cannot now. Oh, there's our dog. <laughs> Lava in this game looks incredible. I mean, this is just incredible. A webcam tilted down for a cat cam. Well, then, then you'd 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 see too much. Oh no! I need to be looking at the game when I'm making those jumps. Who <laughs> again, guys? I just found the tweet where Twitch said, "One like, and we release a pot friend emote for your chats." <laughs> God, you really want it to be like zero likes, you know? jump I have to make to get back to town. Oh, I mean, this is some fucking sick design right now, man. This is awesome. Oh, what? Who? What? Whoo! That was a, that was a tough jump. I puckered a little bit. These people have been captured. Jesus. Abducted. Oh, I'm so fucking brave and good. That's it? Fuck me. That's horrible. Oh my god. <laughs> Darth Beavis is a sub for the kitty. Well yeah, no, I mean desperate, you know, you're right. Let's let's get let's get more Desperado in here. You're right. You're right. I'm wrong. 
Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we're getting to change Gritchies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the good stuff. Despie's my little companion. She hangs out with me all day when I'm broadcasting. Let's see if we can make this jump. Dude, the platforming is, is a big challenge. But I'm up to the task. I nearly threw myself right off the edge there. <laughs> oh yeah, you gonna snag some of my water? Sure, go for it. Infect me with the toxoplasmosis. Put the cat on the main screen and Elden Ring in the small bottom right. No, I did not even notice this here. Albanoric blood clot. Ugh. Ugh, I hate that word. Dakota James says, we all know you and most of all of us already have the toxoplasmosis. Oh yeah, dude. Where I see cats and I'm like, I should just spend all of my time with this cat. Is this it? Is this the entire relink point? when you first had the cats? I do. I do. I remember the first few days so clearly. God, they were so sweet. They were so little. Ow. I remember every morning, we'd be like, alright, it's time to let the kitties in. I'm gonna let the kitties in. Then we'd open the door to the bedroom, and it was just like, rump, 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 just be running everywhere, just climbing in bed, rolling all over us. Oh, so wonderful. bonded pair or just siblings? They're a bonded pair. Although they've been pretty grumpy with each other as of late. through some resources in this place. Oh, this place is so gross. My cat used to get upset and angry when she'd hear yours meow on stream. Now she hears them and does her happy greeting meow at the speakers for a couple minutes. Oh my god, that's so sweet. Sure, I know what that light means. Oh, 
I'm not willing to sit yet. Alright. There's a lot of torturing that went on here. That's what I'm gleaning. I am picking up this information as we speak. sequence. So we are right at the mouth of this. So if we if we look very, very carefully. Actually, wait, what's over there? Nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, I so want to drop down there and figure out what's on that side. I'm going to choose not to do anything with that. I'm going. Fucking sweet, dude. Sick. Okay, that's terrible news, actually. All right, we did it. All right. The summoning pool is now open. Creepy as hell. Alright, so... There's this door that we didn't go through. This is the... Outlook onto the balcony. Where we have our lizard boy. I guess lizard boy's up here. It's on a little lizard circuit. Hi. Oh, that entire thing is a throw. Oh. Do this. Alright, no more poison. Yeah, this is this is the way. Okay. This Lord of Blasphemy really knows how to back right yet, only because this guy's like a super blasphemer. Like 100% of the blasphemeriest there ever was. His manner is not doing well, man. His manner is having a rough go of things. Oh shit, these fucking assholes. These guys were so scary when I encountered them way back. So this is clearly a way forward. There's lots of things trying to draw me in this direction, so I'm going to go in the complete opposite direction. Like a smart person. And around the corner is... Yeah, you would just put one little object back here for me. Fireproof dried liver. Alright. Alright, nothing good. Nothing good.
Alright. Nice. Go with some fireproof dried liver. Hell yeah, baby. This is very, very rad. I think someone mapped all this out. <laughs> I mean, they have to be pretty journeyed, huh? I can't believe we have a medium roll. Oh, shit. Mesmerize, this game takes reward exploration to another level. I keep discovering new things, even on New Game Plus. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's. I have not had this kind of joy playing a game in so fucking long. Holy shit, holy shit. Golden Rune, alright, you got it. Yeah, because I mean, like, gosh. I, uh. To be honest, does Elden Ring qualify for the Spa Day game you've always asked for? Well, I mean, Spa Day games for me are often RPGs that are super story driven, super world heavy. This game just feels like an incredibly good action game. I mean, th this game is. It's just on another level. This game is divine. Normally, when I think of Spa Day games, I think of, you know, like Fallout 1, Fallout 2, Skyrim. These games where you're just kind of just constantly wandering, you're getting more and more and more and more immersed in the world. You know, like um, this feeling of un unfolding the mystery and the brilliance of like what, what's happened, what is going to happen in the world. All this sort of stuff is fantastic. But you don't feel it when you first start playing those games. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's impossible to. You know, like, uh, um, when there's a lot of ensemble casts and, and elaborate politics of the world, until you actually spend time in the world, it is impossible to care. Like, you spend some time in this world, and guess what? You start to love turtles. Start to love turtles. Oh my god, WD Harris James says, Never played a Souls game and just picked up this one a couple of days after seeing Sean play it. I'm having trouble doing anything. Like, I can't kill anything. Any tips on what's wrong here? Um, you can give us more detail, but it is a, it's a common occurrence in Souls games. Common as hell. And what I would encourage you to do with, uh, if you're actually having that in, like, a big way, and you're starting to be like, ugh, I'm, like, self-conscious, like, I'm not sure. Just watch, watch, um, watch my playthrough. From episode one. And, um, I would ask you, are you, are you a spellcaster? Because often with spellcasters, it's not clear how to do things. So, for instance, like, I recommend starting with the Vagabond. Just start, if this is your first game, start with the Vagabond. It's a really solid, reliable character. You swing to sword, you block with the shield. But, like, if I want to cast a spell... I see this B-Seal Vitality? I can't cast it. Um, you actually, for, for spells, th this game has really, really choppy... Um, Spellcasting UI UX, you need to hold out some sort of object that permits you to cast the spell. So see how my bestial vitality is grayed out, and then when I equip this claw mark seal, then I can actually cast the spell. 
game has a lot of weirdnesses like that, and I mean, it's sort of, they famously have weirdnesses like that. I don't think there's uh, any two ways about it. And the fact of the matter is, if you feel like running away from stuff, dude, just run away from stuff. It's great to run away from stuff. This guy's put on a beating. stuff in every nook and every cranny. Dude, there, there are some things with the way the hitboxes work with this that are so freaking annoying. This this specific... Dude, this Magmore. So now I just go like this. You guys... I remember Team Cherry that made Hollow Knight talking about this, that you want your game. If you have exploration in your game, it's unbelievably effective to put just like a little tiny path somewhere, just barely out of sight, that if a player explores, they get the reward of like a boss, some unique item.
when he knocks my shield back. Yeah, or like hitboxes like that are really tilting. I should actually stay really close to him. Whoa. Me, man. Dude, I I when I when I equip the double swing, I actually gotta switch to the Naganata. It's gonna be so much easier with the Naganata. Ah uh, Like sometimes you'll actually you'll go tap tap to try to like swing twice. Or you'll go tap tap because you're feeling urgent and you wanna swing once. And that's what happened after I did that. Slam down my character swung again. Oh shit. Actually, that's good. Yeah, the hard part is the camera angle on the hitbox. So I'm going to be ending up round five. Just do one big old play session. I'm probably going to be doing not six hour streams for a little bit. But probably four hour. Until I can take some days off. So I'm really I'm realizing I'm woefully in need of just days not streaming. Fluffers of the final hilarious your stamina bar is larger than your health. Hell yeah, that's what I'm about. I am a stamina full boy. button I wanted. See, I don't know what's causing that to not block. Okay, that was a belly flop, so I shouldn't take damage. Fuck yeah. Who, who remembers how sick Spectral Lance was as an ability that just always staggered? Yes, get out. Oh, get out. Oh. Oh, yeah. Who's the closest path here? Dude, I had almost forgotten how good Spectral Lance was. Just that one throw. 
Spectral Lance is like, I love that Ash. I originally got it because it was something ranged, and I was like, that eh, could be good to have some ranged stuff. Woo, baby. That's what we've been needing. Yes, 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 yes. Hell yes. Fuck yeah. Fuck yes. Yeah, I mean, I originally used Spectral Lance because I was like, yeah, no, it seems good to have, like, you know, another ranged capability, but it turns out that it's, like, unbelievably sick. For the purpose of trying to, um, stagger dudes? Like, I mean, it's ridiculous. I I'm going to use this for a little bit. Oh, I forgot how much I love this. Now, now where where are we? Oh, so this this is the path that I ran by. Here's sick. Oh, and now we get to go across the Great Bridge. Oh my god, this is so satisfying. Move was a staggering success. Hell yeah, I messed what I'm talking about. That is about what I am talking about. Excellent, excellent. 10 out of 10. Is it one of these Godskin Apostles? These Black Flame Babies? Fuck yeah. Check out the a subscriber. Thanks to whoever gifted me a sub. Well, I mean, if it was today, it's probably Deneb, Juggernaut. Never regular here from Germany. Get some of the joy from Germany. I've had the treat to visit Germany a few times. Been to, as we'd say in America, Cologne. Been to Cologne, which I will butcher the pronunciation of. It's like Köln. And then I've been to Berlin. Been to Hanover. Really, really, really enjoyed my trips to Berlin. Is it actually pronounced Cologne? Fuck yes, dude. Secret lever. Now I'm going to walk across that like nothing happened. I hope it deals damage to me when I step on it. Sick. Fucking sick. Look at that, it's cool to the touch. Wait a fucking minute, how do we get up here? So this... I mean, I suppose that what's gonna happen is I'm gonna work my way back up like that. Perhaps? It is unclear. Oh, I see there's a boss.
Mountain Ghost says, if you watch any Donkey's Elden Ring videos or any of their popular media surrounding the game, I've watched no media around the game. Oh, hey, it's one of these guys. Hey, what up? Stitcher, Noble Presence, 50,000s. Serpent's Amnion. Interesting. What is Serpent's Amnion? Amnion from a womb that bore unintended offspring. And from the mother's womb, which cradled the poor unwanted offspring of a repellent birthing ritual. Gross! I think that we're going to do something that we've not done in a long time. We're going to add some strength. Um, alright. Someone did a little bit of malting. Not ready to do that yet. Are you done with endurance now that you're medium rolling? I mean, probably. 60 is a soft cap in this game. I understand to be. So. Soft cap meaning that, like, you get diminishing returns. You get, like, 1x, 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 and then when you hit the soft cap, you get, like, half x, half x, half x. I need smithing stone eight. I thought I just got one. What? Well, we do have we level this one up. Fuck yeah, 89 guard boost. Temple of a igle. Igloo. What's guard boost? If you block and you would have taken some amount of damage. Instead of taking health damage, you take stamina damage. And the amount of damage that you take to your stamina is equal to the base number multiplied by the guard boost amount. Corruption does not work. Okay. So, for instance, if I would have taken 100 damage to my stamina, and I have 89 guard boost, I will now take 11. It's 100 minus... Or I should say 100 times 
0.89 is 89, so that's how much is blocked. Fuck. We are okay. We are okay. We are okay. Load reduces fall damage, is that right? I thought it was dexterity reduces fall damage. That is so fucking awesome. Oh, this is this is this is a soul's moment if I ever saw one, where you get all the way up here, and there's no guide. It's just clear that you gotta throw yourself down like that, huh? Dude, this is so sweet. Oh, this is so cool. Dude, yeah, this, this game is just unrepentant in how much shit is in it. It's like, yeah, no, I'm completely out of control, so what? Sean, what about the balance? I don't fucking care. It's awesome, right? You know, I am not gonna check behind. Uh, you know what? Let's uh, do this. Holy shit. Reversal of these environments is so insane. You know, Overwatch is an example of a game that I think is really polished, really good, right? Super duper refined game. But it's very spare in how it does content. Maybe spare is the wrong word, but it's like... It's very distilled and polished. Like... When you open up Overwatch, like, on launch day, when you opened Overwatch, it was like, do you want to... Ow. Breaking my neck. When you open the game up at launch day... Ow. There was, like, a play button. And there were several levels. Oh, nice. You know, there were several different levels to play on. There was a bunch of heroes. And I mean, that that was it. And I don't mean that as a knock. I mean that as like a... Kind of like how the product looked as a whole. And everything was done like perfectly, dude. Everything was like perfect. You know I'm thinking about going there, huh? But at the same time, you know, there was not a lot of mystery or mystique or like, holy shit, there's so much stuff, oh my god.
And again, it's not a criticism. I wasn't trying to be that. I swear to God, a few fucking... Ah. Oh. It was a game that was trying to offer an incredibly focused, distilled multiplayer experience, yeah. Which again, is good, is great. But in contrast, this sort of game, like holy shit, there's just like, I'm, I'm climbing up an enormous volcano and look, there's just like still more stuff to explore. It's like insane, we're gonna be at the peak of the world. It's just like a lot of games. Oh my god. It's like right on the side of my neck. Mm. Oh. Oh. I mean, so many AAA games feel like focused on distillation. Wait, is that the place we were supposed to go to? Wait a fucking minute. Oh my god, is that where we're supposed to go? Sick. You know, like Control, another example of like a heavily distilled, focused game. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Control a bad game? Absolutely not. Not a chance would you get me to say Control's a bad game. Well, Control doesn't have a shitload of crazy different weapons. I'll stay in this fire if it suits me. It had, like, the four. Um... You know, there were some new moves that you learned, but they were, like, pretty limited in scope. Let's see, where do we go from here? Probably just down these stairs, huh? Oh, fuck. What? Ah! Jesus Christ. I don't know, like, like the, the, this, this game feels so much like the games that I played when I was a kid, where there would, they would just keep, there would just be more and more and more and more and more and more and more, oh my god. Like, what's a game that you played as a kid that just, there was so much shit in there? I mean, frankly, even Nintendo 64 games like GoldenEye, just like the sheer amount of like multiplayer levels and modes and single player content. Shit was awesome. Oh yeah, Zelda. Dude, I didn't realize that the original Zelda was fucking 91. Or not the original Zelda, Link to the Past was 91. Oh my god. Yep, yeah, Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, 10. Those games were huge. I mean, like, absolutely massive. I remember, like, being at home from school one day. Just stayed home, played Final Fantasy VII on the PC. Wazdying my way through. And, like, I played for, like, ten hours without moving. And, like, 
at that point, I left Midgar. And I was like, holy shit. Oh my god, it's so fucking huge. What the fuck? Alright, I see you. Yep, so this should link back. Like this to the church, huh? Played Final Fantasy VII Remake? I didn't. When I heard that it was only part of Final Fantasy, I was like, alright, I'm done. I'm doing that anymore. This is the game. Working as intended. Oops. What a convenient place to get my stuff. Down the hatch. Ooh. I know a number of people that are just like so obsessed with the Final Fantasy VII Remake. They're just like cried throughout the entire thing and they're just like clapping and cheering. I've never seen any media like it. Where it's legitimately going to be like several games to retell the story of one game. Like, I, I have no idea if there's anything that's ever quite been like that. Sleeping on my mattress, hanging out. Upstairs, huh? Oh, hey. Hey. Sick. Two ways in, two ways out. Yeah, that's pretty sick. This bam. Wow. Yeah, God, I just can't believe how much shit was in Final Fantasy VII. I wonder how many people have gone through this game without a lantern. playing games i remember miss felt like that it never ended to me there was always another more difficult puzzle dude it was so sick i played through miss not long ago on stream actually dude this noggin not i forgot how much i liked using this thing man Oh, fuck, that's not what we wanted to do. Character jumped way too eagerly. Alright, well, whatever. Alright, I'm going around this corner.
What's... What is this? What is this design? Oh, fuck you. Fuck this. Fuck me, man. Oh god, I thought that guy was dead. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, well, let's just let's just drop back into the basilisks. Let's drop back in. And you know, yeah, let's let's use this. Let's use this sword. Alright, so I, I only have a little bit more time today. Only just a wee bit more. <laughs> Venus process. Misses a jump, finds a secret. This is the game. Yeah, right. Right here. It's very, it's very trick kind of pain. Isn't there a guy in here? There he, oh! Harvard Dorses, man, you find areas that don't even see. Yeah, I mean, apparently by accident in a lot of cases. Kill everything in this game? Pretty much. Alright, I'm just gonna go a little teensy bit further. See we see itty whittle bitty. So unrestrained, like the idea of just having this journey to this point include a bizarre secret down here. I mean, that's like, I mean, that's fucking awesome. God, there were so many just old games like this. Talk about strong direction. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing a uh, somewhat similar thing. When, uh... Commoner's headband. Oh, so worth. A similar story told about the, um... Director of... Smash Brothers Ultimate. Where he just, like, walks in. He's like, alright, guys. I want to make a Smash game that has every single character from the past Smash games. Everyone was like, oh my god. And it actually sounds like it cannot be done. And, and then, lo and behold, they did it.
Fuck me, get the fuck out. Drink. Alright, so there's one more bastard in there. Holy shit, are we fucking joking me? Oh, how fast does the death frog thing build up? Oh, dude, it builds up so fast. So scary. I swear to God, it's gonna be something—a like smoldering butterfly. You know it. I know it. We all know it. I gotta take old Bone Eyes out. Lap five. I'm gonna journey back through one more time. But anyways, 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 man, I just, it's so delightful to play a game. Where you can just feel people in a studio. Oh. You can feel people in a studio being told to just make cool shit, and then when they're having issues, they're like, all right, make more cool shit, make more cool shit, make more cool shit, make more cool shit, make more cool shit. It's the only way you can get a game like this. I mean, just the raw amount of content. I mean, I, I, I have said this a bazillion times. It's probably annoying to watch this stream. Unlock, please. I talk about it all the time. And it's so true, dude. There's just so much shit. I can't even believe it. It's great. It's great out of eight. So we're now kind of in the above part of the manor. No. Yep, it, yeah, okay. This is not what I thought we were in. Your fruit. Man, serpent ashes. Stabby boy, I love being back. So we are like right above stuff. We are like right above here. And as I'm here, I'm remembering the long lost legend. <laughs> the wall that you must hit 50 times for it to reveal itself. What do we have here? What actual war using the, on the spear? Spectral Lance. Wasn't that removed in this patch? I don't know, was it? The wall is gone. Is that so? ready for this yet. You say they patched it out. Is it just like an open door now? Can no longer destroy it. <laughs> Wasn't supposed to open. Boo. Ah, oh, terrible design. Bring it back. Bring back my wall. What the fuck? What? What is this insanity? Oh. 
Oh, well, I can't do anything here then, huh? Oh shit. Goodbye. Despino shot it in a fucking Ah, this is fucking horrifying. I fucking hate it here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck, I hate getting hugged. We're cool, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. We're cool. Seedbed curse. I know who to give the seedbed curse to. Nice resolve. I'm good with my ashes. Right at the entrance. Right at the fucking entrance. I got you, baby. What up, Patches? What up, Patches? I knew it. I fucking knew it. Aha! We're here. Nice. So now I actually need to go all the way back up, somehow. This fucker. Why the fuck would this be a useful relink point? We gotta go here. Yeah. You know what? You know what? We're gonna call it. So, there's still... I'm just gonna spam with... Julie, Julie, Julies. So, please enjoy my cat's bum. <laughs> so, we are going to call it there today. About one level an hour. And there's a teleporter. It's a teleporter. It's gonna send us somewhere. I'm pretty sure where. Pretty sure where. Power. Turn off PS5. Put this over here. I'm gonna go walk my doggy. Because I love my doggy. Take care of that little pupper. Oh, oh, oh. How long do the bottle be live? Oh, within the hour. Luciano. Within the hour. 
Uh, I'm going to close this, Pop. Uh, one more final shout-out uh, as we're wrapping things. Whoops. Trying to go to here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before we hop off, going to remind all of you, my friends have an alpha up for their game, play Spellcraft. It's free to just participate. It's one of those, hey, do you want to like participate in an early access alpha, early release sort of thing? Like, oh, I kind of like to see if the game's fun. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. That's why I'm recommending it. Um, if you enjoy it, Say that I sent you and give me all the credit. That would be wonderful. That really helps my career. It's not participation, it's credit. I'm a fragile egoed man. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to see you tomorrow at 9, and we're going to beat the Volcano Manor, and we're going to head to the Forbidden Lands. Maybe we'll do Maybe we'll do the Deep Root Basin. Like, I don't know. I can't say for sure. Either way, I'm heading out, babies. <laughs>